So what's up guys, Jermaine here. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Jermaine Young. I talk all things financial related, stocks, real estate, credit cards, things like that. So if it's things you are interested in, things that you like, consider subscribing to the channel. So today what we're discussing is six reasons why I believe that, well, six reasons basically why I'm concerned about the stock market in September. And uh, let's get right into it. So I'm gonna give you the first one here. The first one, why I'm concerned about the stock market in September is because of negative pre-announcements. Now, this week so far, three companies, paint markets, paint makers, uh, PB&G Industries, Sherwin-Williams, and as well as a uh, home builder, uh, Prelude Group, issued pre-announcements to lower guidance about their current quarters, warning, warning that supply problems and material costs are causing challenges that could lead to worse than expected results. The good news, none of these stocks are getting crushed because demand is still in good shape. That's why they're still getting business. So the bad news is these simply these supply problems, they're not going away. They seem like they've become ingrained. Now, the second reason here is because simply the Fed. Now, pressure on the Federal Reserve's chairman, Jerome Powell, to change his stance that inflationary pressures and transitionary could intensify throughout September. Now, while the viewpoint on this is that the Fed's highly accommodative monetary policy remains in place, I refuse that I refuse to believe that after these precautions were keeping hearing that about raising raw costs. Don't you know that you wonder if inflation is more intra intractable? Sorry, I'm getting a little tongue twisted here. Uh, intractable than they thought. Now, rising interest rates would be the magic exler to taming down inflation. But they do know that destroying demand that crushes earnings, which in turn crushes stocks. So, you know, like you crush earnings, you will crush stocks. Now, let me give you my third one here, my third reason why. My third reason why is higher rates. Now, if rates are headed higher, and this, you know, would be directly because of my last reason, the Fed, you know, if rates are headed higher, that creates more com competition for higher yielding dividend stocks. These days, not many stocks are supported by their yields, but they will be even fewer if rates go up. Now, fourth reason here is Congress. Now, there's a bit of a double-edged sword involving the Democrats' desire to pass their $3.5 trillion budget uh, package that level the spending would surely create jobs and supercharge the economy. But it comes at a time when there's already more than 10 million job openings in the United States. As a result, wages would likely go up as companies fight for workers, which is a good thing if work for a living wait for a living, but bad for if you own stocks. However, if that big stimulus package likely gets killed, the investors who are depending on it and who what and what if it would and what would it do to companies they own? Well, I've got to tell you, those people would get disappointed. Without this, you can't go, you can't prop up the catalyst. So the next one here, my fifth reason is a fresh supply of stocks. Now, new companies going public through special purpose acquisition companies or traditional IPOs are heading supply of the stock market, which can serve as a wet blanket dousing the fire of buyers. Now, of course, this IPO cycle will eventually play out like they always do with a lower sell off. I'm sorry, with a sell off that lowers all prices to levels where stocks are more attractive. We can't seem to stop this deal flow. Now, the sixth and last one here is that I remain concerned about China and the unpredictability of the president, of their president, let me so, so to speak. Particularly as it relates to Taiwan, which as it plays a crucial role in the global semiconductor industry. Now, here's the bottom line. At the end of the day, I think that we can deal with any of these issues, but not all at once, at least not without lower stock prices. And lower stock prices is what December, is what September is all about. So the bottom line really is, is that, you know, at the end of the day, historically, September is a month where stocks are usually lower. It usually is a sell-off. 
That's just what it is. But as you know, prices go lower, it looks for deals in the stock market. That's something that I'm going to do. That's something you should do also. Let me know in the comment section below. Are there any stocks that you are hoping for a pullback on and things you want to load up on? I would love to hear from you guys. I want your ideas. Also, if you're not subscribed to the channel, subscribe to the channel. Give this video a thumbs up. And as always, until next time, peace.